Okay, does this look fun or what? Because it totally is. Okay, this is called a scroll saw. It's just like using a sewing machine. It's a little louder, but not that much louder. And it allows you to make beautiful curvy shapes in wood. So anything that you see that might be filigreed or those pretty brackets or Victorian gingerbread on houses, this is the tool. Look, look, look. It's just like home ec when the first day they made you do those lines and you know you felt kind of like you couldn't control it, but you can, because look. Look how pretty these are. Okay, so there are hundreds of women that are into this um, all across the nation, because, well, probably thousands by now, last I checked, because it's, it's almost like using a sewing machine, so it feels familiar. See, look, let me just explain how this works. Okay, this thing that looks kind of evil and alien, this is the coolest, because it actually blows the sawdust chips away. Okay, and then um, the the blade that goes up and down through the wood is just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this is the tension, just like a sewing machine, so it goes tighter or looser. And um, speed is here, listen. And other than that, it's just, it cuts through wood in a most excellent way. All right, and so what we're gonna make with that, with the scroll saw, is this mirror, and um, it's a bit wonky, it's a little Harry Potter-ish, it has that wizard-like feeling. Um, but it just shows you, uh, I wanted to show you what you could do, so it's a little crazy. And it's um, stained with aniline stain. See how rich it is? And the joints are not quite normal. See how they're kind of wonky too? See th that? We're gonna do that too on the big mirror. The only mistake I made, well, on this one was that um, the screws show from the side. So on the next mirror, we're going to put them in from the top. Okay, so this is one side already cut, and in fact, this could be the other side, really. But then it all looks too matchy-matchy, so I'm going to take a separate board and cut out the other one. Okay, so let's have a quick lesson. The, um, it, gets, it sounds really quiet when you turn it on, but it gets louder as the um, wood bites the blade, and the blade bites the wood back. Okay, so you want to brace the board with one hand so that if I don't brace it, watch, it chatters and, and it doesn't want to start. Okay, now I'm just going to start to play with the line. Okay, so you've really got sort of a free-form thing happening, and you just kind of let your body tell you where the next curve should be. Um, if you do feel nervous about that and you want to draw a line, go ahead, but I think you'll find it's like the first day of home ec where it just made you crazy to try to follow any kind of a line at all. It's harder to steer. I don't know why, but watch. I don't know what it is. It just, it's just harder to follow the darn line. So if I were you, I wouldn't put that kind of pressure on yourself the first time you try this. Just, just let yourself kind of coast through it, okay? So I'll finish this board, then I got a bunch more boards to cut up, and then I want to put them together. The thing is, if you start with four boards, you get four completely different surfaces. Otherwise, you end up with everything just so symmetrical, it's not quite right. You want a completely different board on this side. For most of the population, asymmetrical mirrors are the way to go. 
Their uneven shape takes the emphasis off the fact that our faces aren't altogether perfect. In fact, if all the mirrors in this world could suddenly become asymmetrical, I'm thinking it would be a global mood booster. So I have all the pieces cut out now, and I'm just lining them up. And um, I have to be honest, I, I actually sort of just made this up as I went. So I'm not sure everybody does it this way, but it is kind of fun. OK, here we've lined everything up. Now, here's just a, a, something I want to point out to you. Once we come along with the routing, the router, this is not a happy corner. It's just a little too tight. So that gives it a bit more space. That's better. So you know that these two boards are the same length and these two boards are the same length. So you can more or less square the darn thing just by feeling it with your fingers and lining things up like this at all four corners. But then it's a good idea to actually put a carpenter square on one corner at least. That's this big thing. And, um, and just make sure that it's looking square and not like a parallelogram. Okay. Now, once I have it as square as I want it, <laughs> can never be too square, but you know, I'm going to trace the the um, shape of the bottom piece and the top piece on each of the side pieces. Then I'm going to go back to the scroll saw and trace. Um, I'm going to have to actually follow a line now. So it's a good, a good thing I practiced. And there's a lot of subtlety in these lines. So see, I'm going to cut those bits out of the um, side pieces so that this piece just drops into place. And then screw from all four corners, and the screws won't be seen. And then back to the scroll saw and just make a nice, four nice passes. And then we'll glue the thing together. is reflected in your face. You can worry about how your face looks, or you can blame every little choice you've made that gave you the face that's now looking back at you, asymmetrically, from the mirror. Martha Washington said, the greater part of our happiness or misery depends on our disposition and not our circumstances. Now, she may not have been a looker, but she had a great time. Okay, things are sort of good here. Um, I'm just gonna, actually, I got a trick. I'm gonna glue these joints together. They're, they're pretty good. You don't really want perfect, though. That should never be a goal in life, should it? No. I asked my heart, and it said no. So uh, I found out that, too, with my own metabolism, when I'm using the scroll saw on a line that I've drawn, I have to go a little bit, pause, then go a little bit, and then pause, and, and it's just, it just helps. If you, if you keep going in one long line, then you kind of get out of control. Not out of control especially, but you just, you know what I mean? You just feel crazy. Okay, so the glue is, uh, I've learned after years of experience that I just, I'm gonna get into it with my hands, so I, I have to use the glove, okay? So just get some on your finger and slap, slap it in the joint, really, like that, and do both sides. And then I'm going to clamp these babies together with these um, squeeze clamps, they're called. And every girl should own at least one pair of these squeeze clamps. They're fantastic. You'll use them again and again. And this is carpenter's glue, which is a little bit, uh, it's the yellow stuff. It's, not, it's white glue, but it's a little bit stronger. And um, they may even make an exterior version of it if you were wanting to make a, an exterior mirror for the garden wall, for example. You want enough glue that um, it thoroughly covers the joint, but not so much that it's going to squeeze out a lot of excess. And then my trick, if I've got a slightly loose joint, is that I sand the darn thing. Um, while the glue's still a bit wet, 
and that way the sawdust fills in. Okay, that baby's done. The sawdust fills in um, the gaps a little bit. This is kind of like putting a puzzle together. Oops. Okay, now it's not terribly perfect, but you never want that. Okay, and I'll just square it again to make sure that everything's going together as tightly as possible. There. Now, I'm gonna clamp this, and then I'm going to leave it for a uh, a little while till the glue is set up. And then I'm gonna come back and try to uh, put some screws in it. Okay, so a little trick. Okay, I've screwed these corners together because they're gonna have glass hanging in them, so we want them to be really strong. If you have any doubts about your joints, this is the time to fix it with a palm sander. You just want to uh, go over that to take out any gluey residue that might be there, okay? Make it all pretty. Um, but this isn't so bad. So now for routing, you can clamp the work down or you can use a non-skid surface like this. And I really like, th like these things because they're easy to use. It's gonna go like this, and then the thing isn't gonna budge. I think that's just brilliant. Okay, so routers. Now this is another tool that's just been completely, like some secret wonderful tool, okay, that I've always missed until recently I found out about them and I just love them. So what it is, is this is a plunge router and there are different styles. You can get even really little ones that are um, made for trimming laminate like um, Formica kind of stuff. Um, but this is a little bit heavier duty. You can see that I've got a nice big bit on it. That's that thing right there. And the shape of this bit is OG, okay? And what happens is that I'm gonna start that bit spinning and then I'm gonna, I should be holding it, that the sawdust comes out that side. Then I just drop it down like this and it carves that beautiful um, pattern, like on my other mirror here. It carves this beautiful pattern. So you can actually hand carve signs and all kinds of things with a router once you're um, happy with your technique. So uh, you want the eye gear and you want the hearing gear because it is a little bit loud. This, this is gonna lock it down. Once I get it into position, I can lock it down. These things are just the greatest tools. This is the trigger, and then that starts it. This is a safety thing. And uh, I'll finish this off, but it's the most brilliant thing. Look, when this is down, the bit is actually, this little wheel is actually riding against the edge of the wood, which is what's steering the bit. So you see, even when you get to a really tricky bit like this, the wheel's just going, oh, oh, we're going into this kind of a curve. So it's very, self-evident that it, it works nicely, right? And um, you, can d you can drop the bit lower or higher by operating, should never rest it on the bit actually. Uh, you can drop the bit lower or higher by operating these gauges. So that's really, I mean, buy a book about routers if you're gonna try using a router because they've, they've got great books and you can learn a lot. So I'm just gonna finish this off. Or take a weekend course. It just doesn't take very long to learn to get really good with a router.
A wise person once said, years may wrinkle the skin, but lack of enthusiasm will wrinkle the soul. So if you can find one thing to be enthusiastic about, you can at least have a wrinkle-free soul. Of course, the soul is only visible in that special kind of mirror called friends. Therefore, if your soul has wrinkles, you can blame your friends. Okay, so I got ahead of myself a little bit here, but look, I routed this board on three edges. Okay, this is the shelf. Then I flipped it over and routed it the other way so that you get this nice sort of sandwichy effect. Same thing with the brackets. Scroll saw the shape of them and then routed them out, okay? Now, the shelf is gonna sit on the bottom of the mirror like this, and you always cut the shelf a little bit wider, so if the mirror is 22 inches wide, the shelf is closer to 24 so that it sticks out a little bit and looks kind of professional. Okay, so I'm just gonna screw this together and then, oh baby, I'll be putting that mirror on the back. Actually. That person who looks back at you from the mirror may have your eyes, your clothes, and your thoughts, but some days it just takes a lot of nerve to say, hey sugar, looking foxy. However, if you can glance into the mirror and say, I feel okay, so I must look good, then you're probably on the right track. Okay, I almost have my mirror finished, my shelf and bracket mirror, but I'm home making some clips to hold the mirror in place on the back because the problem is that the mirror clips they sell are these big clunky plastic things and they stick out so far that the whole thing will be held away from the wall. So this is uh, actually a plumber's clamp that looks like this and you just cut it in half like this. They're, they cut pretty easily because of course they're copper. And then you use some pliers to just bend them around and nip them a bit and you get this nice little bracket that fits right on the edge of the glass like that. And then I'm just going to use um, a brass screw to put it in place. And let me just cut one for you so you know what I'm talking about. So it's still a little bit long. That much of it. And then you take... I want to just bend this a little bit so that like that, then like this. So I'm creating the part that actually goes over the mirror. Like that. Try to get a right angle. And then you just need to, um, if you have a pair of tin snips, you just need to take a little miter off the corner so that you can um, fold part of it out of the way. So which corner is it? It's this corner. So I want to cut it right there so I can fold that part down and it'll keep the corner in place. So just a little bit like that. Then back to the pliers and bending it into a right angle. And there's my clip. And I'll just have to fudge with that angle a little bit so that it, it grips properly. That's it then the big reveal. But first I have to make sure that the mirror is, you can get them to cut the mirror any size you want or you can cut it yourself if, you, if you've used a glass cutter before. Okay, I also made the clips that go in the corners that hang the darn mirror on the wall. And they're just made from plumber's tape, which is uh, this stuff, copper plumber's tape. So you just cut off a couple of the little holes and one goes into the mirror and one hangs on the wall over a nail head. Okay, <laughs> this baby's almost ready. All right, ready? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, so pretty. Isn't that nice? Okay, so see, it wasn't so bad, right? And uh, you'll get to learn to use a scroll saw and a router. Uh, you can rent them, you can borrow them, but never for more than half an hour or so because people get really finicky about their tools. So very pretty. And you can see that um, 
this one too, this is uh, made by Tom Trowbridge. He's a craftsman and he actually taught me a thing or two about routing and uh, I really like this little table. See, this is a, a chamfered edge, so the bit that he used looked like this and it just rolled around like this on his router. And there's all these other bits too. Look, you can buy them in sets and they show you a little picture right on them of how they cut. So. There are infinite varieties of router bits. You can have router madness in your own home. Okay. So pretty. Well, the, the mirror, I mean, not, not what's in it. I've heard that there comes a time in life when you're just not vain anymore. There's no point to it, really. Your personality has lapped your physical appearance by then. And in your upper years, personality counts for everything. Ask anyone in a retirement home. If they're getting dates, it's probably not about looks. It's about personality. <laughs>